Oh no! Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Mola Model Structural Kits. I'll be showing you some of the structures that I've built and some of the structures that you can build too and some of the lessons that I've learned playing and experimenting with these kits. The Molo model consists of modular pieces similar to Legos but instead of plastic they use a high quality uh, durable metal and they're all magnetized so they just click together. This allows you to create different combinations of structural systems such as shear walls, moment frames, brace frames and they also allow you to replicate and visualize the behavior, the movements and deformations of structural elements such as a pin beam or a fixed fixed beam. These are the types of structural elements that structural engineers work with every day to design buildings, bridges and other structures. So it's really cool to have something that's physical, something that you can touch and feel and play around with, with, with the behavior. A lot of you have been asking me about what these are and where can you find them? So not only have I included them in the links below, but I've also included a promo code that will allow you to get a 10% discount. Thanks so much to the Mola model team for sending me these kits to review and for working with me so I can give you guys a discount. If you're a structural engineering student, architecture student, or an educator, I think these are uh, great tools in order to start studying and understanding structures. I think these are a great tool because they give you that physical element that's sometimes missing in your uh, structural engineering classes. You see the shapes on paper, but you never really get to feel it because you can't just go up to a building and intuitively see how it's going to deform or behave. So with the mole kits, now you can. I consider it Lego for structural engineers because not only can you build things that you can imagine in your head and experiment with different shapes and structures, but you can also completely nerd out on the structural engineering concepts. You can build buildings, bridges, cantilevers, moment connections, braces, shear walls, pin conditions, fixed conditions, rigid diaphragms, column buckling, single curvature, double curvature, tension only members, tensegrity structures, and even simulate seismic behavior. For engineering professionals, it's a great way to help explain some of the concepts to new engineers or to even uh, the owners, the architects, and the clients that you're working with. I find it easier to explain some of the structural engineering concepts such as soft stories or column buckling by actually having a model that replicates the behavior of how the structure is going to, to behave. Molo model allows you to do that and it simplifies the communication gap. Especially for people that aren't too familiar with the technical concepts, uh, they don't have to know it, they can see it. And they make great desk decorations at your office and they're fun to build. Who knows, maybe you can get it as an educational reimbursement at your firm. Let's jump into the Mola model kits. So how do these work? Basically everything is magnetized. There's magnets in almost all the pieces, so all you have to do is snap them together and that's about it. They come with manuals and they're also available online. They're well illustrated to give you the basic concepts and give you some ideas on what you can build and the structural engineering concepts that you can play around with. Kit number one allows you to do the basic multi-story structure. What was really cool to me about it was that I could easily show some of the seismic effects such as building torsion and soft stories. For example, here we have a structure with braces on all four sides of it so under seismic loads it works pretty well and it's stable. But let's take out the brace frames on one of the sides so it's a three-sided uh, brace structure. So when an earthquake hits you can really see the torsion in the building or the twisting in the building just because we removed one of the braces on one of its sides. That's why structural engineers prefer to have walls or braces on all sides of a building. And here's an example of a soft story. As you can see, the second floor is properly braced with structural walls and, and braces, but the bottom floor doesn't have enough walls or braces. The reasoning for this in real life is for cars, for example, uh, to be able to park under the structure or the house or apartment. So just as in real life, the structure looks fine. It's standing up, but if an earthquake happens, the structure pancakes and flattens out because there's not enough shear walls or braces on the bottom floor. So what do we do to fix or retrofit these types of soft story structures? 
Well, your car still needs to park under the house, so we can't add a wall or a brace. It's gonna be in the way. So what structural engineers often do is they reinforce the joints or strengthen the columns. They might do this by adding a steel frame with beams or columns. They call this a steel moment frame or they might add special uh, wood walls that are really skinny in length, but still strong. So when an earthquake hits, the structure will still be standing and you can still park your car under the structure. Here I'm using kit number two. What's unique about this kit is that it allows you to do column splices and beam splices. It has shorter member segments that I'm not re really using in this demonstration. Note that I'm adding plastic column stiffeners. These column stiffeners are mainly used because the columns are pretty long to prevent column buckling and they're actually found in kit number three and not number two, but for demonstration purposes, I'm using them here. For these tall columns, I'm stiffening them up with these moment connections and I'm also adding a cantilever overhang at the roof. Here are the beam splices that I talked about. So in order for me to get this cantilever to work, I'm going to be adding moment connections and the beam splice up top. Over here, I want to do a cantilever and just another way to do a cantilever is to add tension straps or bracing to allow that structure to stand up also. I think this model had a good demonstration of column buckling. As you can see here, I'm gonna be removing one of the plastic column stiffeners that I put in there for demonstration purposes. So the column in the back is still stiffened and the column closest to us is unstiffened. If I apply an axial or downward force on the stiffened column, nothing really happens, it's still standing up. But if I apply that force on the unstiffened column, then you can clearly see the column buckling or essentially just losing all of its strength and it can buckle in any direction. So if we don't want to add a column stiffener to this, we can try bracing it on uh, both of its sides. Just so we have a point of connection, we're gonna have a column splice connection shown here. As you can see, it still buckles, but let's add a brace on one side. If we push down, great. It doesn't buckle in that direction, but it will still buckle in the other direction. So let's put beams, braces on all sides. Now you can see that the column is properly braced and it's not gonna be buckling under axial loads. And this is Mola kit number three. This one, what's special about this is that it has suspension cables or tension only element cables that you can do a lot of cool stuff with. It also comes with column stiffeners for uh, long columns so you don't have to brace them. Here you can see I'm using these column stiffeners. I'm building a bridge, so this is the tower. I'm gonna to brace up the tower with these moment connections. I'm gonna be adding the anchor cables. Then we're gonna start spanning this gap. And as we're continuing to build the bridge, we're bracing the diaphragm just because if you don't, your diaphragm or your members are just gonna be flying everywhere. So it's good to note during the construction sequence that, hey, you still need structural elements. Now it's time to finish off the bridge. And I also had a lot of fun trying to come up with my own structures. Here I built my own floating tensegrity structure, which is basically a structure that's almost all in tension with very few compression members. The main member that's in compression is the slanted column. And I'm supporting that column with anchor cables similar to what I learned from the cable state bridge example. I had a great time playing and experimenting with these. It was cool learning about structural engineering in a different way. Usually it's by 
pen and paper or doing hand calculations or playing around with the software, but actually being able to uh, feel and see how the structure behaves. I definitely thought it was a cool learning experience because these are the st structures that we deal with every day. These are the concepts that we deal with every day and reinforcing it from the physical aspect only makes you a better engineer. If you wanna check these out, click on the links below in the description and also don't forget to use the promo code for your discount. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you and I hope you have a great day, a great career and a great life. I'll see you next time.